Good morning folks and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman with you here on a rather cool and windy early February day. Um, last week temperatures were around 70 degrees and uh, here it is in the 40s now. And yesterday we actually had some snow. So you know they say here in Tennessee if you don't like the weather stick around because it's fixing to change <laughs> and it always does. What I'm featuring today is a little rifle that's arguably the most popular 22 caliber rifle ever built, the Marlin Model 60. I say arguably the most because of the Ruger 1022, which is also very popular, but I would say that the Marlin Model 60, ever since its introduction in 1960, is most likely the most popular and widely distributed 22 caliber rifle. And the reason I say that is because uh, since its introduction, there have been right around 12 million of these things produced in several different configurations. Whereas the Ruger 1022, the number hovers right around 5 million, which is still quite popular and a vast number of rifles that have been built. Um, the Marlin Model 60 replaced the older design, which was the uh, Marlin Model 99 and one of the major improvements was the implementation of a brass inner magazine tube. The Marlin Model 99 had a steel inner tube and it would quite frequently rust and seize up inside this uh, steel tube on the outside but uh, since the newer models came out with these brass tubes, they were impervious to rust because brass doesn't rust. So that was an improvement in their design. This particular model here is one of the most desirable of all the Marlin 22s because it has the full, full length 22 inch barrel and the full length 18 round magazine. And this one also came with the last shot bolt hold open. Right here is the release for it. Okay, that's a nice safety feature and it also uh, keeps you from doing any damage to the firing pin because on the last shot the bolt is held open and you're not dry firing on an empty chamber. So that'll preserve your firing. Throughout pin. the Marlin Model 60's history there have been some changes made to not only the design of the action and the configuration of the stock but also in the capacity of the magazine. This one here as I mentioned being an 18 round magazine. All the newer models comply with a law that was passed in New Jersey back around 1986. This one here being one of them. This is a 15 round tubular magazine uh, that was implemented at that time because the law that was passed restricted the amount of ammunition you could load into a gun. So instead of losing the sales in that one state, Marlin complied with the new state law and started producing these Marlin rifles with 15 round magazines. Everything else was pretty much still the same. They, had a full 22 inch barrel just like the older models it's just that that one major change um, has was made at that time so if you own a rifle that has an 18 round capacity you know that your gun was made before that particular date incidentally the two rifles that i just showed you are not mine they belong to a friend of mine that i work with and he was kind enough to loan them to me for the purposes of making this video so we'll thank him for that and uh, we'll do a little test firing with one of those rifles here shortly. I recently acquired, or I should say reacquired, a Marlin Model 60 because uh, years ago I, used, I had one. I believe the one I had was a Glenfield Model 60 and the one I had had the famous squirrel impressed on the uh, stock itself, on the wooden stock. And I'm happy to say here I found one at a gun show. This one has the squirrel impressed here on the pistol grip as well as the oak leaves here on the fore end. 
And the, like I say, the one I had came out of my uh, possession somehow, and really don't know what happened. But anyway, I wanted to replace that rifle with this one here. Marlin Model 60 was marketed under several different names, uh, one of them being Glenfield. You may own one of these, and uh, it may have a name such as Western Auto or uh, Glenfield, for example. Um, they were marketed under West Point, uh, Otasco, J.C. Penny. You know, there's just so many different, so many different uh, names. Another one that comes to mind would be the Revelation. Those were quite popular at one time, but they were all the Marlin Model 60 design. One of the features that Marlin implemented that made a relatively inexpensive little rifle quite accurate in its price range was what they call micro groove rifling. And what that is, it's a series of multiple uh, grooves inside the barrel that, that were actually as high as 19 in number. Okay, there were 19 lands and grooves machined into the barrels and they were very shallow yet because there were so many lands and grooves they positively will grab the bullet and guide it straight down through the bore without any uh, unnecessary bullet deformation because they're quite shallow. Here I've got a couple of bullets that I passed through the bores of a few different rifles I have. This one here I pushed through this Marlin Model 60 and you can see all the little grooves that were impressed into the side of the the bearing surface on this bullet. This one here has six lands and grooves and that was pushed through a bolt action Remington that I've got. Theoretically they've they're supposed to be more accurate due to that feature. Uh, here's a better close-up of uh, the micro groove rifling of these 22 caliber barrels. This particular little rifle I topped with a four power Bushnell custom 22 scope. I've owned this little scope since back in the 1970s. Uh, this, I actually gave this to my grandfather and when he passed away, I ended up with it. So I, I decided to put it on this little Marlin Model 60 because it's, uh, it's so small and, and lightweight. This one has the bullet drop compensator feature so that you can dial in the range at whatever shot you might be encountering at the time. Here it goes up to 200 yards, but uh, you won't be taking shots at 200 yards with a 22 in most cases, especially in hunting situations. Um, effective range of the 22 caliber rifles right out to about 100 yards, and that's where you should limit your shots for ethical kills on small games such as squirrels and rabbits. Most of your shots are going to be encountered between 20 to 40 yards in most instances. Late season squirrel hunting, you might get shots out there 75, 80 yards and you need an accurate 22 to be able to do that with. That particular gun there was malfunctioning uh, quite regularly with different brands of ammunition. So I ordered some parts for it and I installed them this morning and test fired the gun and recited it a while ago. And I'm happy to say it's functioning flawlessly now. The parts that I ordered were a new uh, loading throat, a new recoil spring, a new ejector spring. I also ordered a uh, recoil buffer that I didn't have to install, but I do like to have an extra one around because occasionally those will break on the Marlin Model 60. And I also installed a new uh, loading lever along with that new loading throat because that's very important. 
and I'll be showing how to replace those parts and how to troubleshoot your Marlin Model 60 in an upcoming video. But for today, I just wanted to review the little gun. And uh, let me just say one thing about reviewing guns. This is an outdoor channel, okay? When I review a gun or feature any type of gun, it's for sporting use only. It's for hunting or target shooting, you know, just, it's nothing tactical here. This is f purely for outdoor use. Um, when I review a gun, it's no more of an issue than reviewing a rod and reel a hunting knife or a pair of binoculars you know it's all tools of the trade to me and you have to use this equipment to be successful outdoors um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way this is not a tactical channel this is purely an outdoors channel and I'll be doing a lot more outdoor activities as the weather gets a little better. So uh, without further ado, let me say I've got some targets set up out here at 25 yards and at 50 yards. And we're going to have a little fun with the Marlin Model 60 today. And hopefully we'll get some good accurate shots so that I can relay to you just how accurate these little guns are. And if you own a Marlin Model 60, it's no great secret to you that they're very dependable and very accurate little rifles and a lot of fun to shoot and they're a joy to carry in the woods because simply due to their design they're relatively lightweight you know they're about five and a half pounds they're very sleek in design easy to hold and carry through the woods kind of a no frills nothing extra rifle here um, and like I say, they are dependable. You can attach a sling swivel, you know, so you can carry it with a rifle sling, keeping your hands free. Um, and also, it's a great gun to start new shooters with. You know, if you're new to the sport of hunting, I would probably recommend one of these because the money that you're spending right away is not going to be very much. I mean, you can buy these guns new for under $200. The price range, depending on where you buy them, will go from 160 on up to about 200. You can get a used one a lot of times for under 100. So that's not a lot of money to spend on a rifle if you want to get into the sport of hunting. If you buy a good scope, that's going to cost you sometimes more than the gun itself. But I would recommend a good, uh, good scope on any kind of 22 rifle because you're just going to squeeze that much more accuracy out of the gun and you're going to learn to shoot better using a scope. So, you know, there are many hunting opportunities out there for beginning hunters. Uh, there's a lot of public state lands available, you know, wildlife management areas and, and other places like that. And small games such as squirrels are quite abundant. So, you know, if, if you want to get into that, that would be something that uh, I would recommend is get you a model, model uh, 60 Marlin and a good fairly decent scope sight the little rifle in and I would most likely recommend especially if you're a new shooter to attend a hunter safety course and depending on what state that you're in you may be required to pass a hunter safety course before you're allowed to buy a hunting license and uh, I would have to say I'd agree I think everyone should attend a hunter safety course. Even people that have been in the sport for as long as I have, it wouldn't hurt to attend one every now and then to brush up on your safety skills. Because safety should always be a number one priority anytime you're handling any kind of rifle or pistol or shotgun, okay? So, uh, so get that hunter safety course taken care of. And I think you'll find it enjoyable in most cases because it'll teach you a lot about guns and hunting and safety. And uh, if you find someone that can get you into the sport, that's been doing it for a long time, that's even better. You know, if, if you can, and I'm sure there's a lot of hunters out there that would be more than happy to take you out with them and show you the ropes. So, you know, it's a wonderful act activity to get into. And uh, I would highly recommend it because, you know, it gets you out of the house, gets you away from the computer for a while 
and it's rather enjoyable and it's good for your health too. So I'm going to try a few different brands of ammunition to see which gun likes the different brands. I've got some CCI standard velocity here and I've also got some SK standard plus that I recently bought. This is very good ammunition by the way. It's highly accurate. Made in Germany. What can I say? There's a new design that they've come out with that you can use for small game. This is a SK flat nose and it's just about as accurate as the SK standard plus. And also we have this RWS target rifle. There's so many different brands of 22 ammunition out there that are now available and uh, since the great 22 depression is pretty much over you can find 22 ammunition at very reasonable prices nowadays and i urge you to buy several different types to see which one your particular gun actually prefers and which is the most accurate um, that's what we're really striving for is accuracy because when you're shooting at small targets the size of a squirrel's head or a rabbit's head you know, you need a gun that can group very consistently and very tightly. So do some experimentation. That's, that's a lot of fun too. And find yourself a, a range, maybe a, a public range that you can visit or if you have a place to shoot, you know, some private place. You know, set you up a range at different distances and familiarize yourself with your gun's potential. So let's get out here and have a little fun with the 22. The first rifle we're going to test fire is the one that I just recently purchased and uh, repaired. I want to do a series of five shots of three different types of ammunition. Um, first we're going to load five rounds. One thing I should mention before I continue is anytime you're up here and you're opening this magazine to load your rounds, make absolutely sure that the gun is unloaded and that the bolt is open. You don't want to be up here with your hand up here in this area with any chance of a live round being in there. You know, so safety first. So let me finish uh, loading these CCIs. That's going to be the first five rounds. these SKs. And lastly, we're going to try the RWS bullets. And the first uh, group that I'm going to fire is at 25 yards. Action's open. Safety's on. Now we're ready to fire. Okay, I got my earplugs in and I fired one shot at that left target just to kind of see where I was at. And I had to dial my bullet drop compensator down just a little bit to accommodate the 25 yard shot there. So I'm going to zoom in here. Kind of windy today. So maybe it won't affect our groups too much. Okay, first round is charged, ready to fire. We're going from left to right.
Okay. Now the next one's going to be the SK Flat Nose Basics. One in the middle. Okay, and the last group is going to be the uh, RWS target rifle, five shots. Well, there you can see that this gun prefers the SK flat nose bullets, especially over the RWS. You have to try these different brands of ammunition in your gun to see which one it likes. Okay, now I'm going to shoot the little swinging targets at 25 yards. And in the last three shots, I've got some water filled containers on top of that target there. I'll be shooting at those. Okay, the top target. Then from left to right. Yeah, I'm going to be shooting the water jug on the right. And the one in the middle. And we're empty. That does it for the 25 yard test. Now we'll go to the 50 yards. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on the 50 yard targets. There you can see we've got a squirrel. A wild boar, two swinging steel targets, and some regular bullseye targets there. Uh, I think the first five shots I'm going to shoot at the boar, and my aiming point is right there behind the shoulder. So five shots with CCI standard velocity at 50 yards. Okay, next I'm going to shoot at the squirrel head using the SK flat nose bullet. Seems those shot a little bit low at 25 yards, so I'm going to hold right at the top of that squirrel's head.
That's five shots. Okay, now for the swinging targets. We'll do the one on the right first. Three shots. Another one on the left. Okay, now I've got some high velocity ammunition. Got two cans set up there at 50 and two at 100 further down. Shoot the top one first. Okay, I got two further down there at a hundred. Let's go see what we got here. We'll check the 50 yard targets. Okay, before we go down range, let's make sure we're unloaded. Actions open, nothing in the chamber. Okay. There's five shots at that squirrel's head with that SK flat nose. This one here went a little bit further down and to the left. But that's three shots right there in the brain. Not too bad. And then there's five shots. Went a little bit low at 50 yards right behind the shoulder. And here's the impact from the targets. I got a little bit more settled down there. And there's actually three impacts right there in the middle. Same with the steel targets. So anyway, that's some shooting with the little Marlin Model 60. So we can see by this test target and the performance at 50 yards that this little rifle here, the one with the squirrel on the stock, really likes these flat nose basic SK. That's a good little hunting bullet there because that flat nose will provide some shocking power upon impact on small game. And that's what I'd be using it for when I go squirrel hunting. So we know that that ammunition will go with this gun. So now we're going to test out this little rifle here. And then after I get done there, I'm going to show you the proper way to clean the barrel on these rifles. Okay, next up is this little rifle that my friend loaned me. And we're going to be shooting at 50 yards. Okay, 50 yards, like I said. And we're going to shoot the uh, targets on the right first. And then we'll go to the steel targets. And then finally we're going to shoot some more water-filled cans. So here goes. Top target.
By the way, these are CCI standard velocity. Target down. Pretty good grouping right there. Okay, the swinging steel target on the right. That one fell just a little bit low. Now the one on the left. Looks like a dead center hit on that one. Shoot the one on the right again just to make sure. Okay, that one that one hit the mark. We'll go ahead and clean that paper off of that one. And that was the last shot. As you can see, the bolt stayed open. I really like that feature. That's nice. That's a feature you don't see on the older Marlin Model 60s, but that is definitely an improvement. Next, we got two cans we're gonna shoot. One's at 50 and one's at 100. Right there. I'm going to shoot the 50 yard one first using a Winchester high velocity hollow point. There we go. It's a good shooting little gun. All right, here at the 50 yard mark, I just wanted to get a close up at these groups here that I shot. That was the first group. Most of these group right in here. I had one that fell a little bit short. As you can hear, there's quite a bit of wind. So, you know, this is not really a fair test of the rifle's potential, but you can see here with this group, you know, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, most of those fell right within that one inch circle. So that gun there has quite a bit of potential. And that's at 50 yards using CCI standard velocity. And here looking at this steel target, you can see where the bullet impacted right there. That's pretty much right in the middle. Or maybe maybe a quarter of an inch from the middle there, but still very accurate. With that kind of accuracy, you can hit a squirrel in the head every time at 50 yards. Well, after testing both of these rifles, I think you can see that the Marlin Model 60 is quite capable at various distances of shooting some very tight groups. Um, these are some groups that I shot earlier this morning when I sighted this one in after I put the scope on it and did the repairs. Um, this one actually I shot uh, at 25 yards. That's five shots using CCI standard velocity. And um, as well as these. 
this is a five shot group and that's a very impressive group right there that's pretty much all the bullets making one little ragged hole at 25 yards and then of course we already showed this target uh, trying different brands of 22 ammo this was a shot to dial in the bullet drop compensator so that one really doesn't count these are five shots here at 25 yards using CCI standard velocity this is using SK flat nose basic which I'll be using this when I squirrel hunt I have not tried SK standard plus but I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna shoot this as well if not better but that that's five shots that's under a quarter of an inch and that's four of them making one ragged hole so that's very impressive it did not like the RWS target rifle as you can see from this group that's quite a spread there at 25 yards that's not acceptable so like I said you know you have to try the different brands of ammunition for your particular gun to see which one it prefers you may have the same model same barrel length and everything and it may prefer a totally different brand of ammunition than mine so anyway now that we're done shooting these guns it's time to clean them and what we're going to use today is what I always use and that's this Hoppy's number nine traditional uh, this is the, uh, the like I said traditional formula made in USA this is all you need this is what I use on all my rifles pistols and shotguns you know it it, uh, it cleans very well it removes all the powder and lead fouling and also some copper fouling and it actually leaves a very thin layer of uh, residue oily residue on the bore to keep it from rusting so you can safely put your gun away after you clean with this stuff and uh, your bore shouldn't have any problems so that the next time you get ready to shoot it you know you, you know you've got a nice clean barrel um, also use a brass cleaning jag with these cotton patches and since I'll be using a rod I use this muzzle guide here it's a brass muzzle guide now if you were to clean from the breech end on this particular model you would have to use a, a rope or what's usually called a snake to pull it through and then pull it out of the muzzle feed it into the breech end and then pull it out but since we're going to be using a cleaning rod today I'll show you what I've got here if you're going to if you're going to use a cleaning rod make sure you get something that's pretty good value this one here has a bearing handle and a, a coated rod this this is a, a coating that they put over the steel I would stay away from aluminum or brass or anything like that but uh, use a good steel rod that that maintains its straightness and one that has this coating on it to protect the rifling and uh, that by the way is what what this also does it protects the uh, fragile rifling right at the crown of the muzzle make sure that the rod stays centered with the bore but what this bearing handle does is it allows the rod to twist with the rifling as you're feeding either the brush which I use a bronze brush I didn't mention that yet but a bronze brush like this uh, or the cleaning patch it actually twists with the rifling so that you get between the lands and grooves you get all that fouling out of there that way you'll have a nice squeaky clean barrel so let me go ahead and get started what I initially do is dip the brush into my solution there let's go ahead and feed this muzzle guide on there I've got that brush pretty well saturated. Carefully want to feed the brush right down into the muzzle. 
keep the muzzle guide centered with some downward pressure and then just run the rod down through the bore like that keeping it in contact at all times okay we'll dip it one more time here What that does is it'll loosen all the lead and powder fouling. We're going to let that gun sit for a few minutes. Let that solvent work. Same thing with this little rifle. Get it centered. I should mention too that both these rifles I tested today I didn't have a single feeding problem whatsoever they both worked flawlessly with all the ammunition that I used I'll let that gun sit now we're gonna do a couple more passes here with this gun just to make sure everything is loosened up Okay, one, and two. What that solvent does, it actually softens all the lead and powder fouling. It sometimes gets quite hard inside the barrel. I can see some of it coming out already. Okay. Go ahead and unscrew this. Put on this brass cleaning jag. And I like to use good quality patches. You know, I don't, I don't skimp on the care and feeding of my rifles and shotguns and everything. I use the best quality that I can afford. One thing I should mention that I failed to mention, of course I already did it, uh, make sure that your gun is unloaded before you attempt to clean it. You know, always make sure, no matter what type of action you're using, that gun needs to be clear before you do any kind of maintenance on the gun. Okay, just feed the patch down in there like that using a brass jag. I kind of guide it with my hand and then feed it right on through. You know, you can go get a cheap cleaning kit. I guess it's better than not cleaning it at all, but if I'm going to do the job, I want to do it right. These soft cotton patches are great for cleaning any type of rifle bore, whether it's stainless or standard type steel. They really do a good job. I can feel when I push downward pressure on this before I push the rod down, I can feel that that, that guide is centered with the bore.
And that's the patches that came out of it. That last patch is still got a little bit on there, but not too bad. We'll put one more patch down through there. Take your time, there's no need in being in any kind of hurry. Okay. Use my bore brush to get that out. Next, uh, if you want to clean the insides, you need to remove these screws. The bottom screw here, and then this one here and then you can disassemble this gun and clean the action. Now to clean the internal workings. We're going to go ahead and release the bolt, making sure the gun's unloaded once again. And folks, do yourself a favor. Make sure when you take these screws out, get you a screwdriver that has a properly fitting blade for the slot okay don't use just any old screwdriver because you're going to mar up the edges and uh, you want to try to preserve the appearance of those screws to keep your rifle in tip-top shape if you use the wrong kind of screwdriver you know you could slip out of the slot and, and mar it up or even scratch your gun so we're going to remove this front screw, lay it aside. I bought this little gunsmith screwdriver set a few years ago and I've used it religiously. And then the rear screw here, that'll come off. Set those aside. There's no need in taking this screw out because all that does is remove the trigger assembly and the trigger housing. All you really need to do in here is wipe it out, maybe use some compressed air and blow that out to get any powder fouling out of there. 22 ammunition by its very nature is inherently dirty, so you're going to get some powder fouling in you know in the action as the bolt blows back backwards from firing it now I've already cleaned this before but I'm doing this as a demonstration most of these newer models simply have a plastic pin that holds the bottom part of this into the action you can just pull it out like that and then just slide this upwards and out You don't have to take the loading rod out, but I will for this reason and for this demonstration. Um, you can remove the bolt and take the spring out if you want. Um, what you'll have to do is get a pair of needle nose pliers and grab that and pull it back. Inside here, this is what's called the recoil spring. And this is the bolt. To remove it, just take a pair of needle nose, keep it under control with your thumb, and there's your recoil spring. This one here is in pretty good shape still. To remove the bolt, slide it rearward, and then you can tip it like that with your thumb. You can take the charging handle right out. And there's your bolt. Now you can clean the inside of this out. And what I use to clean out the inside of this and this mechanism here is just an old toothbrush. Once again, 
I just dip the toothbrush in my Hoppies number nine. And then you can just carefully brush it out like this. Be sure not to release this hammer here. I mean, if you want to release it, put your thumb over it like this and hold pressure on it and then push forward on this tab. Let's see, we'll do it from underneath. And there it is. Okay. Let me do that again. Put your thumb on it, push forward on this tab, that way you can clean in between the coils of the hammer spring and get all the powder fouling out. Now you can use some compressed air or whatever you want to clean that out with, but you'll have to return this hammer back into the cock position before you reassemble it. I'll just take some paper towels, clean paper towels, and after I brush it out and wipe it down. You don't want any excessive fluid or anything in this action. Just make sure it's good and clean. What little bits in there is going to lubricate the inner workings of this mechanism here. Same thing with this. Just brush it out and then wipe it down. Wipe the bolt down, get it clean. You don't have to put a lot of oil in here, you know. One or two drops is all that's really necessary. You're not lubricating an engine, it's just a mechanical device here that you, you want a light film of oil on it. And what I do is I keep an old rag that's saturated with mineral oil, just plain mineral oil that you can get at any store, and it has a real light coating of mineral oil on it. And all I do is wipe it down like that. And what that does, it leaves a really fine film of oil on anything that you're wiping down like that that's plenty believe me you don't want a soupy mess here with full of oil put the charging handle back in make sure that it's level with the top of the action pardon the background noise there's somebody down here riding their four-wheeler you want the guide rod to be towards the rear. Hold this down. Now it's back in place. That's probably the most difficult part of it is trying to get that spring back in there. Reinstall the trigger and hammer group. Put the pin back in. Now you just have to put everything in reverse order. And before I put the action, the barrel action, back into the stock, I give it a good wipe down with my oil rag here. Because if you leave fingerprints on there, it's going to rust eventually. So just make sure you, you wipe everything down real good before you put it back together. Put screws back in. Make sure you start them first. Don't tighten them until they're all started. Okay, that's not tight. Well, we know it started. Same with the front screw here. Get it started here. And now that I know that the rear screw is tight, or is started, we, go, we can go ahead and tighten this down.
takes a little bit more time to use the right screwdriver blade, but believe me, it'll be worth it in the end. And there's the Model 60 cleaned and serviced. So next time you get ready to shoot, you know the gun's ready to go. Well, folks, that pretty much wraps it up for this video and for my review of the Marlin Model 60. I think, as you can see from the video, they are remarkably accurate little guns, especially for the money. So if you can get a chance to get out there and use one of these, I think you'll find that you'll enjoy shooting it, and you'll probably even want one for yourself. And if you already own one, I think you'll agree with me that they are fantastic little rifles. So until next time, remember, if you can get out there and go hunting or fishing, hiking or camping, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And also remember, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this come your way. So until next time, my friends, y'all take care and have a good one.